Hello, in this lecture we will talk about chapter 22, which will deal with the master budget and planning. We're going to start off with the budget process and administration. So here's a, a flow chart of the things that a budget can do for us. So a budget enhances coordination so that activities of all units contribute to meeting the company's overall goals. So in one way to look at a budget is that it is a plan. So we're going to look at past data. We're going to put together a formal plan to try to predict and aim towards set goals that will help us achieve future goals. And that's, of course, any type of goal is set up that way. We're going to look at past data, what has happened in the past. And we're going to compile that information, look towards the future, see what kind of information in the future might change what has happened in the past, and then project towards the future. And then, of course, once the future has then happened, we're going to compare what has happened to what we planned to happen. So the budget, in one sense, is that formal process that uh, helps us to plan and structure what we think should happen and therefore structure what will happen in the future. So promote analysis and focus on the future. So again, the budget is geared towards that future analysis for us to take that past information and go towards the future. Uh, communicate management plans throughout the organization. And so a budget's going to give that formal type of plan and we're going to create a budget for the entire company as well as each department which will help us to communicate to individuals to departments and say hey here's where we're going uh, help us to get where we're going is everyone on board hopefully it can also include the participation of individuals to buy into the budget so they can be part of the budgeting process and therefore be involved in the budgeting process and therefore more involved going forward provide feedback for evaluating performance so the budget's going to be happening before the performance happens, and we're going to set benchmarks based on the budget. And then, of course, once time has passed and we have the actual numbers, then we're going to compare what happened to what we thought would happen. And that's where we, how we can set benchmarks and see how people are performing. Converts long-term strategic plans into short-term financial plans. So any kind of company, as well as individuals, often may have long-term type of strategic plans, where they want to go, where they see the business, in 10 or 20 years and versus where we see the business a year from now and we can break that plan down break that long-term plan down into a budget this is a formal process that will allow us to do that motivate employees through participation in the budgeting process and established attainable goals so ideally we would like to have employees involved in the budgeting process we would like to have information going from the bottom up to be part of the budgeting process although of course the budget will be done and uh, completed on in the upper level management but if we don't get that bottom information or that information from every department throughout the organization then uh, you have less buy-in we'd like to have everybody involved to get the buy-in make people th that get everybody's information and of course there may be information that uh, the numbers don't show us from uh, the corporate office to man the top management office so we want to get that information for both those reasons one it's valuable information and two people need to be feel involved in the process and warning if not properly applied budgets can have a negative effect on a company so make sure that the budgets are realistic now we'll talk about the negative effects of budgets as well we do need a plan but if the plan is not done well then we have certain types of problems that we will discuss and be watching out for as we go so if we have the budget reporting in the timing sense most people when they think about a budget they think of an annual budget which would basically be broken down to quarterly type of budgets. So if we were thinking about a year uh, in, that starts in January through December, and we would have the year January through December, we could then break that into quarters, and there's 12 months in a year. If you divide that by four for four quarters, you have three months. So January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Those would be the quarters we can then break it down to. That's probably how most people think of when they think of a budget. Another way that's kind of convenient to look through a budget would be a continuous or rolling budget, which is a 12-month budget that rolls forward one month as the current month is completed. So as one month is done, we kind of drop that month, and then we project 12 months out again. And in so doing, then we're always looking 12 months into the future. So there's some, some uh, comparisons that can be more useful if we are always looking 12 months into the future, uh, and there's also some benefits to having... Uh, a standard budget that can be broken down quarterly so if we think about the budget committee and how the budget committee is going to be formatted and what the budgeting process will be obviously a corporate structure is it's not a democracy it's going to have 
a t very tiered and leveled structure. So we know that we have the top management, we've got the middle management, and we've got the supervisors. And that's how it has to be so that uh, we, can, we can make the, de the decisions in a formal way and we can make decisive and fast decisions in a quicker, quicker type of way. Now, the problem with making decisions quickly and this kind of formal type of structure is that it's sometimes it's more difficult to get the information needed to, to make those decisions. We still want to get, of course, the information coming from the departments, the uh, supervisors here, and middle management to the top management in such a way that it's relevant, we get relevant information that will be involved in the decision-making process. So uh, although the top management often has a tendency, could have a tendency to basically want to look at the numbers for the prior year and just basically make the entire budget, what we're going to hopefully try to do as much as possible is get the supervisors involved, the middle management involved, once again for a couple reasons. One, we need this information from the bottom because the numbers might not be the only thing involved. There might be some things that these individuals know that are not reflected in the actual numbers from the prior year that we need to take into consideration when projecting into the future. Also, uh, the more buy-in that people have in the process, the more they are willing and able to uh, help to achieve the goals in the future. So for those two reasons, we really want to have the information uh, from the budgeting process through everybody. And so if we look at the budget committee, then we will have a budget committee and the budget committee, well, we could have a budget committee. The budget committee is responsible for budgeting policies and for coordinating the effects of all participants in the budgeting process. So consistent of managers from all departments of the organization provides central guidance to ensure that individual budgets submitted from all departments are realistic and coordinated. So again, we want to get that information from the bottom up and we want to get all, everybody involved, but we are going to definitely need that centralized management to make sure the budgets are realistic, to make sure the process is done well. So this is going to be the centralized area that's going to make sure that the process is done the way the process needs to be done uh, in order to make an effective budget.